These oil spots tell me two things. One, I really need to change the oil in my truck, and two, that it's leaking. Today on Saturday Mechanic, we're gonna teach you how to find leaks. So, what we're gonna do today is show you how to hunt down the source of those leaks. The most pressing on this pickup is, a, is an oil leak. We also can have leaks in brake fluid, coolant, uh, power steering, differential, and each one of those, basically the hunt is the same. It's just a matter of using your brain and sleuthing things out a little bit, using a good work light too. So if we have an oil leak, why are we at the back of the truck? Well, oil or a leak in general will always flow down and back because you know it's, it's a liquid so it's gonna flow down and as you're driving, the wind's gonna blow it backwards to the vehicle and you're gonna get it in weird places. So basically what you want to look for is the most forward spot and the highest spot, and that's probably around where your leak is. Oil has made it all the way back here. For instance, there is not supposed to be engine oil on the fuel tank, and that definitely didn't come from here. It came from up there, so let's move forward. So if we keep looking, we see this cross member also drenched in oil, and there's really only one place that that could come is still from the engine bay. As we move forward, we're getting into the mechanical bits. We've got the manual transmission here. It's got some oil on it, but it's not transmission fluid, so it's not gonna be the thing that's leaking. But as we move forward, we can see it's, it's, it's funky and scummy, so it's definitely oil. It's oil on there, but it's been there a while and it's getting dirty now. However, as we move forward, we're getting to the oil pan. And this is where the action really probably is gonna start to happen. If you're up in here, you can see that everything is covered in oil and grease and dirt and that gives us an indication that the problem is close. So we're looking at an oil pan that's aluminum so there's going to be no rust holes in it but that doesn't mean that the gasket around top can't fail. What you're looking for is indication of fresh oil coming out regularly and I'm actually not seeing any of that here. What I am seeing is a lot of fresh oil on this cross member here. So that tells me it might even be forward a little bit from the bottom of this oil pan. So if we move to the front side of the engine, the engine actually ends right about here at the front of this cross member. We can see if we poke our nose way up into the top of the engine, it doesn't look like it's leaking up there, but it's coming from somewhere at this level. It doesn't seem like it's topping out much over the front of this filter, which is kind of strange. I'm not seeing any indication of leaks here, over here on this side, but it looks like it's going to be right around that filter somewhere. In order to really nail it down, I think we're going to need to clean it up and see what happens. You may want to start with something that's a little bit uh, gentler than brake clean, but this stuff really works in all situations. It's going to come right off. And it will really clean up all the junk on that engine right away. So we'll clean that off and this will give us a clean frame of reference to work from so we can tell exactly where that leak's coming from. You're gonna get a little greasy doing this but that's part of the deal. It's better to do this and take the time to find that leak and fix it than it is gonna be to let your engine continue to suffer and leak and cause a mess on your driveway and everywhere you go. So clean it up real well so that you can see where the leak is sourced from. All right, so now that we've got everything pretty well clean, what we're actually gonna use is foot powder. It doesn't have to be antifungal like this stuff, but the idea is to spray this on and it gives us a light white background to compare against where our leaks are coming from. So. I suspect that what's happening here is I'm leaking either from the mount of the oil filter or around the oil filter itself, which would be the greatest opportunity because that means I can just replace the oil filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it around all the suspect areas and then I'm going to have to lower the truck, run the engine a little bit, crawl back under here, take a look. The reason we're using foot powder is that it comes off as opposed to paint that'll just stay there forever. I think that's pretty close. Maybe a little bit more, but I'll lower the truck. We'll run it a little bit and then we'll see what happens. All right, so now we'll fire up the engine. Let that run for just a couple of seconds. Thing is, this would be the one place where 
a symmetrical lift, an asymmetrical lift would beat a symmetrical lift like what we've got. Make it easier to get in, but this works fine too. So, fire that up. We'll let that idle just a couple of seconds to build oil pressure. And then after it's built oil pressure, it should start to drip. Any time about now is probably good. So now I'll turn it off. We'll put the truck back up, see what we see. Let's see what we got. All right, we got some drips here. Are you kidding me? It's, no, it can't be that. It appears that there is a hole in the filter. No way. That is so awesome. That's like the cheapest thing it could possibly have been. I was expecting like front main seal or something horrible in one of the gaskets, but like the filter to be the failure is spectacular. That shows you exactly why you should go through this process rather than just throw parts at it. I was expecting like monstrous repair bill since this thing has 200,000 miles on it. Well, we found that leak. It's gonna be a $5 fix, which is awesome, but We've got other fluids to investigate. This thing isn't leaking anything else, thankfully, but we're gonna show you what those leaks look like they're on, when they're on the floor and where you might wanna look, at, look for them when you, they show up for your car. So since we've got that oil problem sorted out, we're gonna move on to the other fluids. This one looks just like water dribble on the floor, but if you touch it, you can feel it's kind of, it's not gooey, but it makes a sort of odd friction between your fingers, and that's a good indication it's brake fluid. If you've touched brake fluid, make sure and wash it off because it's crazy poisonous and you don't want to lick it. But what you want to do is fix this as soon as you possibly can. Don't drive the car if you find brake fluid under it because a brake fluid leak is very serious. It'll get air in the lines and you'll end up being able to not stop at all. So if you find brake fluid, fix it immediately. And fixing it means hunting in the brake system. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, you've got a couple of different brake systems. One, if you've got a drum brake system, the most likely candidate is like a leaky uh, cylinder in the brake shoes. So you'd have to actually take the, the wheel off, take the drum off, inspect on that. This vehicle has uh, disc brakes all the way around. So what you wanna do is look for any kind of weeping source of leaks. A lot of times it'll happen in the lines, the flexible lines or the junctions in there. And most of the time the hard lines live a long time and are fine, but if you find that any of them are rusty, or like I said, have any indication that they're weeping, that's a part that you're gonna have to replace. If you don't find anything in any of the lines, and we're talking all the way from the back to the front, you're gonna wanna look under the hood at the master cylinder and see if you see any leaking around that. And if you find leaks at the master cylinder, that's going to be kind of an expensive repair. You'll have to take the whole thing out and either put in new seals or put in an all new master cylinder. With that, we're going to move on to the next fluid. So the next one is coolant, ethylene glycol. If you put your finger in it, it feels like water and it smells sweet. Because of that sweetness, actually pets like to lap it up. 90,000 pets die a year because of this stuff, because of leaks of coolant. So not only should you fix it because it keeps your engine healthy, it keeps your pets alive too. It comes in three varieties really. Green, you can kind of see it here, but it's already 50-50 mixed. So it's kind of uh, light green, but you also see it in orange and yellow. It kind of is a hard one to track down because it runs through a lot of the car. It starts up at the front, obviously, at the radiator and water pump, but it also goes back into the heater core and all the hoses that uh, connect those two systems. So in order to hunt that down, you really need to, uh, to take a little bit of time and you know, use the same methods that we used with the oil system. I'll show you a real quick look at some of the suspect areas up above. So up here, you've got all of your hoses and your radiator. And when you're looking, you're gonna find drips, a lot of them um, most of the time if you've got a leak. So the drips will uh, almost invariably end up at the bottom of these hoses. Like we said before, you usually want to go for the highest spot that you can find those drips. Um, so you would follow these drips up to, for instance, the water pump that's right up here. It's common for those seals to go bad. As we said before, you're also going to want to follow the heater core hose. It's, it's about, a, about an inch thick rubber hose that runs 
back to the heater core on the passenger side of the cabin. Um, if that's leaking, you're, you're going to end up with uh, coolant dripping along this side of the car, and you'll find that down the side here. If it's up here in front, you're going to obviously find it on the ground in the front of the car. That's uh, generally a good indication of where to start looking. But like I said, use the same techniques that we did on the oil leak. Uh, hunt it down, clean everything up, spray down your area with, uh, with some of that foot powder and turn the engine on. See where that leak starts to come from. It's really just a matter of replacing parts um, after you found the source. So the last two types of fluids we're going to talk about today are ATF and gear oil. Obviously they're easy to distinguish. ATF is this sort of reddish pink color and gear oil is this sickly yellow. Actually, most of the time that gear oil picks up a lot of dirt and funk and kind of turns dark brown to black, but it's easy to distinguish from the two. Like gear oil is kind of sticky almost. It's actually about eight times thicker than regular engine oil and ATF is, that's an easy one. Like I said, it's the only thing that's red in the car. The reason we have them together is actually both of them can exist in the same place and that's in a manual transmission. Depends on the vehicle that you have, but some use ATF as the, as the lubricant, some use gear oil. And now if you find this leak in the middle of your vehicle or under your transmission as it were, that's an obvious sign of where it's coming from. Unfortunately, it can also end up in the front of your vehicle because what ends up happening is you have a transmission oil cooler and so that routes through the side of the engine bay up to the front and there's a, another radiator up there designed to cool this fluid and that actually is usually where you find a lot of these leaks is in the in the fittings and in the hose that runs up there that's not to say that some seal in the transmission can't break either and just like we did with the oil leak you're going to find that leak the same way trace it to the front trace it to the highest point and then dust it for the area and run it and see where it's coming from the only other place that you're going to find a leak of this gear oil is actually in the back. In the differential on a truck or in an SUV, or if your car is all-wheel drive, that could be there too, or it could be in the front differential. And obviously, if you find that leak in that location, it's an easy identification. That's pretty much the end of this segment. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll be happy to answer them.